All right. Welcome, everybody. This is our discussion and demo with Russ West from London about his RUAC Spoon Challenge 47 scoop template. And uh, Russ is a, a, a good friend, a, a great friend to RUAC, uh, one of our, you know, stalwarts over the years. And uh, I really appreciate Russ taking the time to put together. He's put together, uh, you'll see him up on Instagram, some animated uh demos essentially walking through how he goes about take taking off the wood and, and putting this form together um today he's going to walk us through those um and and just discuss and if anybody has any questions feel free to unmute ask your questions um and yeah so with that russell uh i'm going to spotlight you and if you want to when, when you're ready you can share your screen um and then we'll take it from there all right well good morning good. And good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I'm Russ, been carving now for four years, four and a half years, something like that. And I quite like making big spoons and I like making spoons with big bowls. So it kind of made sense for me to start making scoops. Um, and I've probably done two dozen of these things over the over the last couple of years. Um, Russ likes big bowls and he cannot lie. Oh, go that's ahead. Right. <laughs> Big bowls, big curves, all works for me. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to walk through a few things. But before I do that, I'm just going to show a couple of examples of what I've done. Um, in fact, we've got somebody on the call who I've made one of these for. But here's an example of a scoop that I've made. Um, this is a maple scoop. Um, I've actually borrowed it from someone who I made this for. And she uses it for flour and oats and all kinds of things when she's baking. Um, nice. But what I wanted to do today, really, just kind of walk through the steps. Um, making a scoop, if you do a big one, can take a while. And there's quite a few steps that I follow. So just stop me if you've got any questions. What I'm going to do as well, starting probably Monday, I'm going to be making one of these as well. And I'll release um, some pictures of the processes I go through it. So if you've not done this before and you've missed today's conversation, you haven't had the opportunity to ask, um, try and follow, you know, what I'll be, what I'll be doing in the next kind of two, three weeks. Okay. So awesome. I'm going to share my screen. Hey, before, before you do, I don't know, maybe you have a, a screen this, but are you going to share it all about the tools that you use to do this? Yep. I'm going to talk about the tools awesome. and then I'm going to walk through kind of the steps. Brilliant. Um, kind of verbally talk through kind of what I do. Um, I guess some of the tips really to avoid some of the mistakes that I've made. And believe me, I've made lots of mistakes. <laughs> first. The first couple of scoops that I made cracked and broke and they were completely useless, you know, and that was down to some, you know, basic errors that I made that, you know, if you've not done this before, or perhaps you're not an experienced spoon carver, it might be a pitfall that you fall in, just like I did. Um, so I'll yep. kind of try and raise any particular tips as I go. So I'm just going to share my, my screen. Okay, so you should be able to see that right now. Yep. Okay, so what I drew out was just a basic scoop, okay? Um, basic scoop, you got a handle, you got a big bowl. A couple of the, the key bits really, um, the scoops that I make are designed really so you can, once you've scooped up whatever material you're using, it makes it a bit easier to, I guess, distribute. So you'll note there's a little bit of a, a taper on, what, on each side and also a taper underneath as well and it acts a little bit like a funnel so once you've got some material in it it just makes it a bit easier to distribute if it's very if it's parallel the stuff just falls out really easy um mm. the first scoop i ever made was um a scoop for um you know people who are filling pots with with soil you know for potting um mm -hmm. but um now that that's uh that was quite a parallel one because you don't want this you know because it's quite sticky right but, you know, all the rest I've made really kind of for dry goods, you know. So for Ian Glendinning, he's got one that he uses, I think, for his chicken feed. I think that was had a little bit of a taper on it. I don't think that was massively parallel. Um, and all the other ones, you know, have had commissions where people want it, you know, they're bakers, that kind of thing. So it's, it's quite nice if it acts like a little bit of a funnel. So that's kind of one of the features, I think, of the scoops that I make. You don't have to do it like that. It's really up to you. You know, it's your car. You'll note as well, this particular one is actually one that I was intending to make soon anyway, which has got quite a flat um, end to it. 
a lot of the scoops that I have, you know, you'll know it's quite rounded. But the only problem with that is if you're scooping out of something that's hard, you know, you won't necessarily get, you won't be able to scrape up everything that you want to scoop with the thing, you know, so that's practicality, but really up to you, you know, it's going to be down to the tools you've got and it's going to be down to the material you've got. You'll note there's no dimensions on this. Um, that's deliberate because you can have a scoop, a huge scoop that you could use for chicken feed or something huge. We can do a teeny tiny one that you can use for salt. You know, it's really up to you down to whatever wood you've got, whatever time you've got. Now, the first scoop I ever made, which was the potting scoop, um, I did that with your standard spoon carving tools. OK, so that was just a, an axe, quite a basic one, a saw, a hook knife and a straight knife. You can do it. Um, if you're doing a big one, you're hogging off a lot of material. There's quite a bit of work that, that's mm. involved. Um, you know, your hands aren't going to thank you if you're doing <laughs> a big one. So my advice is if you want to have a go at this, which I would absolutely recommend because these are great fun to do. If you've got some basic tools and that's where you're starting and that's fine. My advice is maybe do a slightly smaller one. You know, don't get too ambitious. Don't do one that you could pick up, you know, a hundred weight of oats with. Do something right quite small to begin with. And once you've done that, you know, maybe you can, you know, maybe you can go from there. What you might want to do is expand your toolkit. You might want to get a couple of chisels. Um, those are a couple of sort of bent gouges that I use. Um, they're by a Swiss company called Phil, but there's loads of different makes out there. Um, so there's a kind of a bent gouge. I think that's a couple of, that's about what, one and a half centimeters wide, something like that. Um, and you can also use kind of more of a spoon um, gouge as well, which has got a tighter radius, you know, to get into those corners. That's, those really do help. When you get to the stage where you're taking out the material, that's really nice. You know, if you've got ones that can cope with using a mallet, that's brilliant. You can take the stuff out. OK, um, and then, you know, if like most of us who have kind of fallen by the wayside and we kind of fallen off the wagon and we can't help but buy more tools all the time, <laughs> you could you could buy an ads as well. You know, if you really want to go mad. OK, um, you know, that's an ad by um, a guy called John Burrell. Um, over here in the UK, but there's a there's a bunch of makers out there. Um, or borrow one, you know. Lots of folks buy these things, don't get on with it. Borrow one, you know. The first time I used an ads, I borrowed one for a couple of months. Once I got used to it, then I bought myself one. Mm. They're quite good if you've got a bigger, wider um, bowl. And I think someone was talking on Instagram about this, weren't they, Chuck? Um, if you're going to use an ads, um, my advice is have a little bit extra width on the material that you're hogging out because until you get quite good with these things, it's quite easy to kind of miss and you can find yourself going through the side. Um, and equally, don't forget a lot of them, have got a flat piece at the back. I don't know what the technical term is, but you can actually use a mallet on these things as well. So you hold, you hold the ads and you're using a mallet and you can actually guide it as well. A little bit like a gouge. Yeah. yeah. The but, pole. Yeah. The pole, exactly. The pole. Yeah. But you can do it. You can do it with the basic stuff. If you've got some chisels, fantastic. If you're like me and you can't help buy new tools, um, go for it. Get yourself an ads, but borrow one first because they're, they're quite an investment. You know, you can't, a good one, you're talking two, three hundred pounds, something like that, you know, three fifty, four hundred dollars $400, quite yep. easily a decent one. Um, you know, I'm good friends with a guy called Dave Fisher. If you look at his blog, he's got various blogs on, on ads is, you know, if you want to have a look and he recommends various, there's a guy over here, there's a guy called Oscar. I forget his surname. Um, if you're interested, send me a DM, I'll send you his link. He's quite a new guy over here. I'm actually going to see him on the 21st. We're going to be doing some forging together. But he's a new fella. He's started to do ads and his are superb. And at the moment, um, quite reasonably priced as well. Yeah. Oscar Rush, that's his fella. Anyway, so that's the tools. Like I say, you yeah. can use basic ones. You know, if you're one of these fellas that's been around a while and you've accumulated tools, go for it, use them. But yeah, I tend here to in the States, another good maker for ads is his Jason Lawn and Jason so, Lawn got some superb yeah. tools. Yeah, his um his is very good as well. In fact, his yep. I think Dave recommends his as well. Yeah, you know, Santa Jav are quite good. There's, uh, yep. there's probably about half a dozen makers that can do, you know, some pretty good ones, but by no means are they essential. In fact, you know, it's only the last couple that I've even used an ads on. Um, yeah. You know, my opinion is if you get to get yourself a couple of chisels, some bent gouges would be quite useful. That helps yep. hold the material out. 
And a lot less expensive. <laughs> a lot less expensive, yeah. I mean, you can get them. I got mine off eBay. You know, they, they were yep. barely used. I think I got them for 20 quid each. Nice. Know? And they're, they're yeah. very, you can get some decent ones. You don't need a name. You know, in my experience, if they're quite old, the steel's pretty good. Yep. You can get away with that. Um, anyway, so I'll walk through the steps. So I tend to start with quite a square billet. Don't have to. It's really up to you. It just makes it easier for marking things out. Um, and in terms of choice of wood, it's very much like you would a, a spoon. You know, you're going to be wanting a hard wood. You don't want a soft wood. Um, there's no reason why you shouldn't use a soft wood to practice. And arguably, if all you're really going to be scooping is kind of dry goods, you could probably get away with it. Um, but my advice is, you know, a harder wood will last a lot longer. I tend to go for beech and some quite closed grained woods, but it's really up to you. You can use cherry, you can use the usual stuff that you would a, um, a spoon, but you know, that's my, my choice. The first step really is marking out the profile. Okay, um, I tend to mark out the profile at the top and the front, because you're gonna be doing a lot to the side anyway. Um, so the minute that you've marked the thing on, you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna be cutting it off anyway. And this is based on, you know, this same shape that we were talking about here. Okay, so with kind of tight, a tight curve, but imagine, you know, if you want to do something with a more kind of curved open end, of course, you know, that's what you can do. So what I do first, once I've marked it out, mark the top for a handle, so you know where you're at. You can see here, there's a taper coming in at the sides. The first thing I do is kind of take those off. Yeah, and this is kind of starting the taper, all right? And for that, I'm using a saw, right? You could probably get away with a draw knife or something like that if you've got one, but I tend to use a saw because you're kind of not really putting too much pressure on the thing. I mean, as you go through, you've got to be mindful that the more pressure you put on this, the more impact, the more likely it is you're going to get checks and cracks. Yeah. Mm. The next thing I do is I then mark Russ, out. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, quick, quick question. Any grain orientation considerations that would be any yes, different sorry, than a spoon? Yeah. Um, not really. I mean, I tend to use quite straight grain. So imagine the, the grain's parallel as much as you possibly yep. can. It, it doesn't matter too much, okay. um, really. Um, I mean, the top generally is quite flat for mine, although to be fair, I do have, have, have some that kind of poke up a little bit, but fairly parallel is perfectly fine. Um, as, as with most spoons and so forth, try and avoid knots if you can. Yep. Um, because there's often quite a big difference in wool thickness between the, you know from the front to the back of these my advice is try and avoid really wet wood that hasn't dried at all you know if mm. it's freshly felled leave it for a while or find some that's that's not so fresh okay is when these things dry and there's a stage where i'm going to recommend you stop let it dry for a bit in some chips just to give it a chance to kind of twist and whatever it needs to do before you finish the thing off um, so yeah avoid really wet wood um, what you can do if you're a little bit nervous or if you think it's still quite wet have a longer billet start with a longer piece so imagine it's going to come I don't know if you can see my cursor on here have yes we can longer, maybe about half an inch you know you know one and a half centimeters half an inch kind of longer that way, if you start getting some checks when it's dried, you can then cut that off and you've still got a decent sized scoop. Gotcha. Yeah, so that, that's one piece you can do. I mean, I've been toying with um, cut it, carving these out a little bit, you would a cookser. Mm -hmm. right? so if you've got a nice big piece of material, what you could do is rather than kind of go to the end is you're carving out almost like a hole. Yeah. So yeah. you don't carve through. I don't, probably should have drawn it so imagine there's kind of a line that goes across here and you're carving yep. out the middle leaving the end and then once it's dried and a little bit more stable then you can cut that thing off all right gotcha protect, you've protected it but i i tend to go through the end because you know i'm don't have too much timber to play with a lot of the time so i try and use as much as i can but as with as with spoons you know make sure you're not carving to the end of where a log would have been so make sure you're in a bit Mm -hmm. So where the log started to dry, cut that off, right? doesn't matter so much the handle, but certainly at the front, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully that gives you a bit of, bit of assistance on that one. So what I've and done... And I imagine that, like a, like a cooks or a bowl, like being, if, if you're doing a larger version of this, 
because it takes some time. I, if you have to stop in between sessions, I'm assuming you're plastic bagging it or, yeah. yeah, and then, yeah, okay. All of all of this for now until I say, you know, you're gonna be drying it if you can't finish it in one hit, which to be fair, if you can do it in one session, you're, I'm, I'm very impressed. <laughs> yep. um, it's, it's a bag for me. Yep. Um, the good news, if you're doing it this time of year, the ambient temperature generally isn't so high. Um, it's a little bit damper in the air, so you're going to get less yeah. this kind of drying problems. Um, yep. But if you're doing this in the summer, make sure you bag it, put it in a cool, dark place until you can pick the thing up again. Yeah. Brilliant. Yep. Okay, so we're kind of starting to find the paper. Sorry, go ahead. That wasn't me. Somebody oh, else? No dramas. Did someone have a question? I missed that. Oh, we're all good. Okay, so I've started the taper on the side. I've marked I've marked out the taper underneath. So I'm taking that off as well. Now, because this is filled, you can use a you can use a saw, or you know, if you've got a decent sharp axe, you can use an axe. Okay, so you've got a taper coming up and you've got a taper each side. At this stage, I'm then going to mark out a couple of things. I'm going to mark out the handle, but I'll give myself a bit of space. Yeah. And start thinking about where we're going to start taking some cor corners off. And this is where I will then take off those corners and I'll take off the back. Now, I try and leave the back still quite chunky. I won't remove much more just yet. Um, I'll play around a little bit now with the bowl. And the reason for that is it depends what facilities you've got for clamping, right? If you've got a decent bit of handle at the back here, you can put that in a vise, okay? Or if you've got um, something you can do with longitudinal um, clamping, like you would with a bowl or something like that, then you can do that too. But I quite like a big chunky handle at this stage because then I'm going to put that in a vise and I can play around with this stuff, you know, quite, quite, you know, from pretty much any angle then, right? Then what I'm doing is I'm kind of marking up, I'm taking off the corners, okay? So I'm just going to mark that up. Then I'm going to take some of the corners off. So I'm starting to form kind of the overall shape. Yeah, not too much just yet. I'm just taking off some kind of rough stuff. And now we're getting to the point where we're going to start taking out the bowl. Now, the way I do it is I take a saw and I cut diagonally across. So you can see the top one end of the cut is going to hit where, where I've drawn my line for the back of the bowl. And the other line is where it hits at the front. So I'm kind of cutting through in that sort of triangle and I'll do a few of those, okay? And the reason for that is it means if I'm getting in with a chisel, I can then take these pieces out really quite quickly, okay? Brilliant. Even if I'm using um, a, 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 a spoon knife or a hook knife, there's actually less material for me to worry about. I mean, I can knock these things around and get the material out a bit easier, but if you take the cuts down and maybe four or five or six, you know, as many as you want, and mm. then you can come in. In fact, even if you don't have a gouge, if you do lots of those, you can then use a straight chisel and you can then take some of the material out. All I would say is make sure you've got a little bit of a gap, leave yourself a bit of contingency when you do this and you're kind of hitting it out with, with a chisel. Because if you get some of it breaking away and kind of breaking away underneath, you got to, you, you know, you might find yourself in a bit of, bit of bother. But this takes out quite a large amount of material, right? And if you're use, if you're doing a big scoop that's going to hold, I don't know, seven or eight cups of, of flour or something like that, then you, you'll be glad of that, you know, because if you start back here and start scooping that out with a hook knife, you've got a long way to go, you know, and if you're putting these cuts in, it helps take out quite a bit of the material. Now, you know, if you've got an ad, great, use it, chisel, use it, whichever, but this is what I do. Then once you've got the material out, you're then going to start working on the back on the handle. Okay. I don't do too much of this just yet. The reason being, while this thing starts to dry, which it will do as you're carving and a little bit later on, um, you want a little bit of material in the bowl. Okay. I've seen folk that have gone straight for a very thin bowl and you get cracks and so forth because you've got a big disparity in the thicknesses. Okay. So at this point, I'm then going to taper down my handle and then cut that down. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll taper it across and I'll cut that down. It's really up to you, whatever style handle you want. 
okay you know some of mine are quite curved some of them are quite straight really depends what folk like i like a tapered handle okay and then what i'll do is i'll take out some corners so you'll know i've taken the corners off the back i've taken the corners off the handle and at this stage we're then just going to round the rest of the scoop okay so we've just got the knife to it and we've kind of rounded it off this is the point at which you kind of need to stop you need to give if your wood was reasonably green this is the point at which you need to let the thing dry for a while okay um if you don't and you go straight to thinning out the front of the bowl when it dries the chances are you're going to start getting some cracks okay because yeah. you're going to have quite a disparity in the thickness from the front to the thickness at the back okay at this stage i try and get a, a uniform thickness as much as i possibly can and the places where you're probably going to see cracks forming, if you're going to see them, are going to be at the front here and possibly at the back in the middle where the handle is, because there's a bit, there's, there'll be a thick bit where the handle mm. is. And then you've got the front because that might dry a bit quicker. Equally, you've got to consider if you've got heartwood and sapwood in the same, same piece of, uh, piece mm. of work, you know, your sapwood's going to dry at a different pace to your heartwood. So just be mindful of that um but provided you're careful and you, and you dry it slowly like i say this time of year is going to be less of a challenge i think for the people in the northern hemisphere if you're in the southern hemisphere you've got the same problems we have in the summer right but this is the point where i would stress give it a chance to finish its warping and drying as much as you can it means you got a harder carve after this stage but it means you're less likely to have to throw the thing away because you've got checks forming and at that stage, then what we're doing is we're then taking material out from the from the middle and the material out of the back. We're nearly there now. And then the final stage, and I just put a little chamfer on the inside so it's easy to scoop the things up. Now you can put it on the inside or outside, really up to you. A lot of mine have a, a chamfer on the inside, but it's up to you how you want. An to do in kennel it. scoop versus an out kennel scoop. Exactly. And then I'll be interested to understand, you know, if people do different ones, you know, which performs best. <laughs> I don't know. Brilliant. So those, those are the kind of the stages that I go through. Um, you may have a better way of doing this. I've done, like I say, a couple of dozen of these. Um, and that's how I found it works well for me. But how much how much time are you finding that you have to let them dry? Um, Ultimately, it depends how dry the wood was when I first started. Right. Yeah. But you know, I mean, just typically, I guess, in the sizes that you've been carving, if you're using semi green wood. I, I tend to give it a couple of weeks. I appreciate, you know, the, the challenge is kind of three and a half weeks that we've okay. got left, I think. Yeah. So, you know, that's going to be a bit of a challenge, which is why, you know, I'm, I'm suggesting maybe folk want to try a, a slightly smaller one. Smaller one. With. Yep. Yep. Because you Makes can probably sense. get because the volume of the wood is then less, right? So you can get yeah. away with it. But I give it a, give it a week, at okay. least give it a week, right? Um, and maybe you should take this kind of idea of start with a longer billet, right? So when it's drying, let's say we've got another kind of half, three quarters of an inch on here. If you're getting some cracks at the front, you know what? That's all right because you can cut it back. Yeah, you should be okay at that stage. In in you know the ones that I that failed that I made early doors. It was just because of cracks and checks at the front. You know you'll get a few around the handle possibly, but the ones at the front are the ones that can make it look a bit bad. Um, yeah. You know, but because scoops generally aren't going to be used for wet stuff, most of the time it's dry materials. It's not the end of the world if you've got some teeny tiny cracks. You know, don't throw this right. away. You've got a little crack. You yeah. can probably fill it or glue it or whatever. That's perfectly fine. It's going to be serviceable. I mean, yep. the one, the first one I ever made um, was for my girlfriend, and that was this um, scoop for scooping. You know, when she's doing potting, you know, in the spring, mm -hmm. that's got a little crack in it now. It's perfectly fine. You know, yeah. it's made out of cedar because cedar is really good. You know, it's got quite resilience for for weather, and because she just leaves a thing lying in the garden most of the time. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's perfectly fine. Just got a teeny tiny crack, no drying. Nice. Yeah, the, the the thing with the drying, like those all like really, you know, great points there. The, you know, for me I, in my areas, the the winters are really dry, mm. and um, this is what that's when I start running into the problems of the mm. 
of the running, but you, you know, certainly those aspects you're talking about, keeping the thickness and letting it dry with yeah. the even thickness helps out a ton. I, 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 what I have found is like, if sometimes I'm still working on it and um, it's still in that state, I, I, kind of, I will actually dip it in water a little bit yeah. before I throw it in the plastic bag, especially in, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, if you, so this is a little, this is a, a a technique that a friend of mine mentioned as well if you've got a you got a bag obviously without holes in um and when you put the scoop into it make sure it's kind of quite ballooned out before you tighten it up so there's a little bit of air around you know if you tighten up really close to the scoop you know you're going to have um i guess the dry bits you know the wet bits of the wood kind of equaling out to the dry bits in the wood over a period of time but if you've ballooned it out a little bit more, you, you'll have a little bit more kind of drying out. And then what you can do is you take it out, reverse the bag and do it again, you know? So that can be another technique for slow drying. You know, if you're, if you're, if you're that way inclined, I, I tend to put mine in a big box of wood chip and that, that works just, just fine for me. You know, I think, you know, the, you, you're buffering the ambient, um, I guess density of water in the air, you know. Um, yeah, you're you're talking about to slow drying. I think Jurgen was talking about to prevent drying because you're still working on it. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like if I, it, it, yeah, it's it's when I'm working on it. I when I'm done with it, you know, I I, I like the bag of chips and putting it in there. That yeah. seems okay. to have helped me. But, like, but it's when I'm working on it, and let, let's say I'm. My wife calls me for for dinner or something, and I haven't I haven't gotten it all down to exactly the thickness that it really needs to be, you know, evened out. I I find I'll I'll dip it in water, put it in the plastic bag, and that stops it from mm -hmm. from getting yeah. the cracks. And I come back and I can continue That's to work. On it. But, but I, if I haven't done it, and the odd thing is, well, I work in and I got a I got a wood stove in my room too, so the the, the dryness in the winter is really up mm. there. So even you know, just working a few hours, I can start getting that almost a checking happening if I'm not, yeah. conscious, I'm not conscious as to sometimes just keeping a little bit wet there because the, you know, the room, uh, you know, working in the wintertime and the, with the wood stove going on, it's just bone dry. 100%. Yeah. I mean, I find that, I mean, I don't know what it's like in the States, but, you know, the, the bags that sliced bread come in over here are a great, sort of shape mm. size for putting spoons and scoops in and they have no holes in um so i've got about 20 of these things from bread that we bought over a yep. period of time and they're great because there's no no escape uh, so you know, just make sure your bag doesn't have holes in you know a lot of yeah. a lot of um carrier bags at um, supermarkets have holes in for safety reasons but that, that's not great for a spoon if you want to keep the thing green. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that's how I do a scoop. Um, like I say, in the coming weeks, I'll be making one of these and I'll be posting up um, my process. And fingers crossed, I don't have cracks and things, but um, that's, that's a really good idea. Up. How you got the, you're using the saw to take out the metal there. That's, I never thought yeah, that's so great. If yeah, you, that's you brilliant. Make lots, make lots of cuts, lots of cuts, um, and you can use a straight chisel at that point in the middle. Obviously, just be really careful that you're not taking out too much, because what you can do, you know, if um, if you're whacking it too hard, and maybe you've got some strange kind of um, grain underneath it, you can take a big lump out underneath, which is why, you know, when you're cutting down, just don't cut too close to the line i mean I've, I've illustrated there that they're fairly close to the line but you know come yeah, you back can chip back. out yeah chip out that's it they can chip out yeah. um but as long as you've got relatively straight grain um and you don't have knots and so forth you should be okay you should be okay well, how are you are you what are you putting in for a work holding device for when you're doing your uh chiseling out so actually if you've got a decent lump on the back you can you can hold it on the handle actually um okay so just in a vice a bench vice or whatever yeah, yeah. Okay. if you're fortunate enough to have um something that you can hold a bowl with then you know you'll have in a device where either using wedges you know this end and a, a stop the other end 
or yep. you can just clamp it down. You know, I'm fortunate yep. that I've got some super jaws. Okay. Which I can clamp these things down. And what I'll do is I'll have a piece of wood this end. So when I'm chiseling into or towards the jaws, yeah, um, I'm, I'm going into another piece of wood, right? Yep. Um, that's how I do, but I appreciate most people probably don't have, you know, things like super jaws. I got quite lucky on eBay one day. Right. I got a quite a decent set. But you can, like I say, you can have you can use a vice on on the on where the handle would be when you're hogging out the material, or you can clamp at each end, you know, using how you would for a bowl, you know, where you're just yep. using wedges, you know, kind of like a U shape um, rest. If that makes yep. any sense. Gotcha. Yeah, and then the rest really when you're kind of getting down to sort of this phase after you've dried it, you know, from yeah, here to here, it's it's just work, really. Yeah. And I guess the closer you get to a thin bowl, the lighter I'm acting with the tools. Because if mm. you're still whacking it with a chisel at this point, you're kind of risking, yeah, yeah. you know, impacting. Because you're always going to have some disparity. And, you know, you can see there, that's quite exaggerated, to be honest. But you're going to have some width differences. And this is where I'm using a hook knife at this stage. So when you're doing your gouge work, and, and maybe my, unfortunately, the the... My computer froze at a point in time when you were talking about the the chisel and gouge work for the inside. Hopefully, it didn't freeze the recording, but I don't know. But just to backtrack a bit, so with your gouges, not your not not like where you're hogging it out after you've made your your saw cuts, but after you've got most of that removed. Now, for your gouge work to start working it down towards the the actual thickness. Are yeah. you like are you are you coming like the way you would a cooks are coming down on it from the side and then yeah. scooping in toward the middle? Exactly okay. right. Yeah. Which is why, you know, the the design that I've shown here is probably harder to do with a gouge, you know, because you're gonna you're gonna tend to have a large, larger kind of corner radius, really. Yeah. You're, supposed, you're absolutely right. You're coming down, you're coming down. In fact, hold on a minute, let me stop sharing my screen. I don't know if you can see me as well. Um, uh, yeah, I'll have you spotlighted okay. once you stop sharing. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. Okay, so imagine um, if I use this one as an example. Okay, okay. so I've got my I've got my gouge. You know, I'm I'm coming down. Yep. Down the sides and the back like this. Okay. Okay. And because, and again, you know, your point earlier about grain orientation, you can actually see it quite well in this one, I think. It's very, very straight, you know, across, across here. Yep. So actually, because you've got this taper, and this is quite an exaggerated one, you can come in, you know, you can come in from this side as well. Okay. With the gouge, if you want to, because you've got, you know, you're going downhill on the ground. Right. Yeah. So, you know, that's another reason why it's quite nice. You know, it makes it a little bit easier if you've got that taper. I'll see if I can hold it. Yeah, you've got that kind of angle coming down there. Yeah. Yeah, so you can come in from this side as well as kind of the back and the top. So like with, I would imagine, a cook saw or a bowl going across the end grain by the handle there coming down that side's probably the hardest part of it because uh, you're cutting cross, crossed end grain, essentially. It is, yeah. I mean, that's why, you know, I've, I've got one of these that I use for okay. this. and it's, you know, it's a feel, it's a, I don't know if you can see that there, 8A20. Um, yep. So it's got, you know, it's 20 width, so two centimeters, just shy of, just shy of an inch. Um, and it's got quite a nice hook to it, so you can get into those corners quite nicely. Yeah. But you know, the first couple I did, I used um, a compound hook, you know, I used one of these, a Robin Wood yep. compound, and that, yep. that worked fine. You know, my, um, my hands weren't that happy about it. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's doable, you know. Gotcha. Um, you know, and this 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 is the first one that I ever did. You know, this has got quite a bit of patina in it because it's been used in the garden for potting. But yep. there's quite a bit to take out. And that was all done with a hook knife, a Robin Wood hook knife. That one. Wow. That, that's all I had at the time. In my defence, that cedar, so it's quite soft. Okay. Um, and that was a deliberate choice because I knew it was going to sit in the garden. Cedar is quite weather resistant. Yep. Um, I probably wouldn't have done that so easily with beach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, well, it, it's definitely doable. Um, and like, it's I, like said, I was sitting here thinking to myself, oh, I have a bunch of black locusts. That's like brilliant in terms of weather resistance. 
horribly hard and very high silica content. So it'll destroy my edges and my hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you've got a gouge, go for it. Um, yeah. You know, I like I like to make I like to make spoons and scoops that will last. Yep. You know, the, the last thing I want is someone's bought a scoop off me and I get a phone call. <clears throat> yeah, it's broken. The yeah. Russell, Russell, do you have any suggestions for the end of the bowl? What I found is on the the smaller ones mm -hmm. that getting this part of the bowl gets harder and harder the smaller the scoop. Yeah, so that's why if you've got a compound hook, I don't know if you can see this. Um, so I'll do it so it's on the background there. You know, it's quite uh, it's got quite a, uh, a curve to the end so you can actually yeah. get into that quite nice quite neatly um if you've got a, a a flatter sweep hook that's not quite so easy to be fair you know and you're going to then you're going to struggle but i i would suggest something like this would be ideal and i think a lot of people have got these it's a robin wood you know it's quite a standard uh tool um but you can get into the corners with um with gouges if you've got you know, bowl gouge or something like that. But yeah, if you got if you got a tight radius, you need something that can get in there. Yeah, yeah like like that one. Yeah, I mean, you could get in there with a Robin Hood compound, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and it's pretty, gets pretty tight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, I mean, I do have other tools. You know, I've got scorps and things like that. But you know, I appreciate that some of those are like hen's teeth. So I'm not going to suggest you you have to right. use one of. Them. But um, yeah, you, you need something with a sh with a small radius. If you've got a small radius in the bowl, that's there's no two ways about it. It's going to have to be something like that. But maybe invest in a compound, um, you know, Robin Wood. They're quite cheap. You, you can get those. You know, there's a lot of those secondhand as well. You know, they they they, they shouldn't cost you too much. I, mean, I don't know what it's like in the US for getting those, but um, do have a look. They're they're pretty useful. The compound ones. You can get in, get get into neat little corners with them for sure. Cool. Any other questions for Russ? If so, feel free to unmute yourself and ask away. If uh, not, just yeah, go ahead. Do you do the back? Do you do you tend to work on the back of the scoop first and get that cleared out and then work towards the front? Um, get get that really, ingrained out of the way, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I try and hog out that kind of that big chunk in the corner, and then yeah. I'm kind of at the back working forward probably the best way to describe it kind of as, as chuck said you know when you're doing a cook so you do the same you're coming in from the sides mm -hmm. um you know i i work my way around if, if i'm honest with you um you know and before you're drying it try and try and get a consistent wall thickness all the way mm -hmm. along the bowl as close as you can um mm -hmm. but yeah i mean you can it depends on how you're holding the thing I and mean, if you're holding if i share my screen again give me a sec um bear with me mm -hmm. So if I go back to here, so yeah, I mean, once you've got, once you've kind of, you know, if, you, if you're going to take my, my advice and kind of cut lots of lines in with a saw, if you're coming down, you know, I'd, I'd, follow, I'd follow the saw first, get these pieces out. So you've got kind of like this wedge that you need to take out. And then if you come down with the, uh, the tool, you know, the four or five cuts across and then coming from the sides, you know, you're going to gradually work away from the material, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's probably easier to come from the back than the front for sure. You know, um, just because there's more meat back there. The yeah, exactly. You got you're closer to where you're clamping the thing if you're holding it at the back. You know, if you're not holding it at the back, it doesn't matter so much, in my experience. But if you are holding it at the back, and I often put that in advice, that way I can get to both sides real easy. Um, and then you know, you, you want to work from where it's most stable, which is the back for sure. Yeah, I mean, I would think your only real option is to come at it from the sides and the back, because otherwise you're cutting uphill and into grain. You can very easily. I mean, you, you, you're you going to, when you get into kind of the later stages, when you're starting to thin this out, bearing in mind that if that's, imagine the grain is parallel with the top face. Right. One, you can come in from this side a little bit. Okay. Because you can, you know, you are still. Oh, that's true, because now you're coming downhill that direction, yeah. When, when you get to that sort of stage, you're probably less likely to be using heavy, you know, heavy hits right. with, with a gouge. You know, you yep. can clean it up with a gouge, to be fair. And you, you know, I wouldn't recommend a mallet, just pushing it with your hands. Um, yeah. But, you know, when you're hogging the stuff out, yeah, I think you're right. You know, you're going to 
generally going to be back in the side. You're not going to be coming in from the front too often. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Let me stop sharing. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'll be happy to share that deck if if anybody wants to see it. You know, I can PDF this thing so people can see the the steps. Be happy to share that. Oh um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, what I can do if I PDF it and send it to you, then they can just ask Ruak for it. Or I don't yeah. know how the best way to do this. Well, is. either that or I'm, I'm maybe I can follow up with Sunny and see if there's a way that we could actually post it up as a like a like a secondary challenge forty seven. PDF that's available um, for anybody that wants it on the the challenge page. That way, people can just go directly and download it. Yeah, sure. I mean, what that I'll do, probably... I'll put a couple of notes on these these slides. You know, just to, some very basic bullet points. You know, yeah. Then I'll PDF that in the next day or so. Then make it. Make, make sure you make sure you give yourself a copyright statement in there as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I, I, yeah. I'm not inventing scoops, you know, they've been around for millennia. No, I know, but I'm just saying for your, your PDF itself, though, the effort that you put into creating it, you know, All right. I, I just don't want people thinking that they can, you know, just go out and start selling your PDF for their, as their instructional, you know. Yeah, yeah I'll do that. Yeah, All right. Cool. Well, hopefully that helps, folk. Um, if you've got, if you think of any other questions, just drop me a direct message on Instagram. Or you know, or get in touch with Chuck and the fellas at, uh, at Rise Up and Carve, and I'm sure this PDF will be available fairly soon. And enjoy making your scoops. I'm, I'll be intrigued to see what what you come up with, and whether you know an internal chamfer or an external, you know, external chamfer is best. I don't know. I've done both, and they seem fine. But let me know what awesome. you think. I want to see lots of spiral handles. Come on, folks. This is Russ's template after all. <laughs> you gotta give yeah. it the Russ twist. <laughs> I've never put a twist on a handle for a scoop. I kind of get to the point like there's enough work already. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chuck. No pressure. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do it. Somebody else can do it. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much, Russell. This was excellent. I hope everybody will get right. value out of it. And uh, yeah, we'll yeah. hopefully get the re the recording posted up sometime soon. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you.